Hi folks, welcome back. This is Ray Arrowwood, and I'm a generalist, and this is my opinion. In this episode, we're going to look at plasma discharge and cratering effects. And I'll show you actual photos and videos of cratering and plasma discharge at the Reading Fire. Within the Electric Universe community, scientists and independent investigators have explored the evidence that high-energy electromagnetic events have dramatically reshaped the Earth and many other planets. For nearly the past decade, professional photographer Michael Steinbacher has personally explored the geology of the American Southwest. Michael proposes his own theory for the formation of the Grand Canyon, in which electrical events still play a decisive role. Recently, Michael's theory has gained support in the research of experimentalist Billy Elberton. And then it struck me that wouldn't it be great if Billy Elberton could do experiments dropping dust from above, and he accomplished that. And then I gave him a new challenge, and I asked him to add a water element to put a, 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 a flowing stream of water while there's dust coming from above, while there's an electromagnetic event going on. And he did that. And it grew faster and faster. And there was a water element involved. It was damp where it was growing. I was introduced to Billy Yelverton's work, which was a huge influence for me. Started watching his videos and saw him producing all these features that are that we can see here on Earth and in other places in the solar system. It was hypothesized by Wall Thornhill that these dust storms that form on Mars originate as a result of the tenuous atmosphere of Mars and it's it being a low pressure and it causing not an arc discharge but a glow discharge if you will or a, a diffuse discharge. So I thought if I put sand inside of my vacuum chamber and removed most of the air and created this low pressure environment and also applied a voltage I might be able to produce some of these dust devils. I got the the cratering effects. You can also see the effects of pressure changes as as the pressure pressure increases in the chamber, the large web of thin filaments will eventually form one arc discharge that uh, can be seen in the sand, and eventually a uh, crater forms that has straight line edges. Here can be seen the effects of H2O inside of the chamber. When the water is subject to lower pressures, it can begin to vaporize. When this happens, the outgassing or boiling of the water will bring the lightest materials of the silica to the surface and can often cover the whole entire surface of the, the silica in the chamber. Notice the salt in the circular uh, discharge spot here. We see some of these craters in our solar system that seem to be covered in fine particles or materials and one could possibly hypothesize that these rocky bodies once had water on them that was liquid and these bodies were subject to rapid decreases in pressure. Another interesting thing about the outgassing is that this outgassing itself can often produce craters and a cratered surface without an electric discharge. I believe the larger particles drop back to the ground around the outside of the crater, but I believe the smaller particles are sucked up back to the plasma stream and are fused together to uh, form larger structures. This may explain these spherical uh, balls found all over the world and the stones would have formed spherical shapes as they fell back to earth through the atmosphere. And also in this video you can see that when the discharge is extinguished suddenly there will be a large surface eruption where the fine materials at the surface will sort of shoot up or bounce up off of the surface. 
This looks like an older plasma discharge scar with a uh, mound of in the middle of it. And I guess that one's still pretty much open for discussion as to how that happens. I suspect the process is very similar to what happens when a drop of water hits a pond. You can also see some interesting jets and uh, even some bell-shaped plasmas coming out of the surface in the final moments when most of the vapor is being removed and the vacuum is basically becoming a low-pressure system. Here you can see plasma discharges from and to a water surface. Here you can see uh, natural plasma discharges from and to the ocean which is more conductive than uh, fresh water because of all the salts in it. Notice in this experiment that the plasma takes the shape of the container. Notice in this experiment that the plasma will lift out of the container and form into a ball. In a future video I'll present some evidence for what the Anasazi used these circular stone structures for. I believe it's the same purpose as these circular structures found all over southern Africa. I've added a little more H2O to the chamber than I was using in previous experiments. It can really be seen the effects of H2O outgassing influencing the shape of the crater throughout the video. There are times when both the discharge and the outgassing are really influencing the shape. It seems that the rim crater begins forming when a more direct connection is being made in the electrical circuit. From an arc plasma discharge, for example. You can see one in this picture that nearly fried a bunch of people. At this part of the video you can see kind of the discharge forming the rimmed crater and the boiling is still affecting the larger crater. Notice in this clip that there's a long scorch mark by the fence, which is a metal conductor. And also notice the uh, scorch around the, the uh, car from the plasma ring. Here's where a plasma discharge from the air hit the ground and notice the perfectly round uh, crater. Now notice the round crater where this woman's house was. Here's the closer view of the cratering. Notice the round scorch mark on the ground and the cratering around this uh, electrical tower. Extreme storms known to bring down hillsides, cause major flooding and lightning and hail, are becoming more common. Frequency of occurrence of some threshold power events have increased 40% with some events becoming over 400% as likely than in past decades. If plasma discharge events are attracted by metal and electrical power systems, then we're in a world of shit. What's going to happen when a plasma discharge it's a nuclear power plant. This may have been what happened to Fukushima. The magnetic field is changing much faster than scientists think. And that's because each discharge event rewrites the magnetic field locally. But we just blew past the red line, maximum error specification, one year ago and are now seeing grid variation error way too high. They are blaming unmodeled crustal and external magnetic fields for taking reality outside of the bounds of their expectations. Folks, the North Pole just accelerated even faster and has made the official 2015 model too erroneous for the above 55th North Latitude region. The shift has begun and it's getting faster.
here's the plasma discharge that knocked the Italian bridge down. That's it for this video, folks. I'll see you next time.